Okay, so today I'm going to be demonstrating baking powder biscuits with cinnamon sugar, aka cinnamon buns. I love this recipe. It was a very basic biscuit recipe, but I like things really, really sweet because my last name is Sour. So I kicked it up a notch and I add some cinnamon and sugar at the end. So as usual, my hair is up, my apron's on, I've washed my hands for at least 20 seconds with warm soapy water. I have all my equipment out. To my right, I have all my ingredients out. To my left, and I have my recipe and management plan in front of me. So I'm hoping I have everything out. And as usual in class, you're gonna take these items out, you're gonna call me over to check, and then you're gonna measure everything, and you're gonna call me over to check again. So the first ingredient here is two cups of sifted all-purpose flour. So I'm going to make sure I have a piece of wax paper big enough to hold that amount and then another piece of wax paper for once it's measured because in class you're going to measure everything out and then again I'm going to check it. So sifted flour is a little bit different than just regular flour. You want to sift a bunch of flour first and then you're going to lightly spoon and measure it. So it calls for two cups. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a one cup measuring cup and I'm just going to take a bunch of flour maybe like two big cupfuls because that's what I'm going to need. And this is my sifter, which is gonna incorporate air and make it fluffier. I'm just gonna go a little bit more. So I have these metal sifters and then I have uh, plastic sifters in the classroom. Okay, so here you go with this one. You're just gonna crank this on the side. Sometimes when it gets to the bottom, basically what I do is I just tap it or get anything that's in, incorporated up on the side. And there's my sifted flour. So nice and easy with the metal um, uh, sifter rather than the plastic one, I think takes a little bit longer. So now I haven't measured it. So at this point, I'm gonna take my measuring cup. And again, I have another piece of wax paper. This is what some of you are tending not to do. You're ready to measure your ingredients out. You sifted your flour, but then you don't have another piece of wax paper to place it on. So I have another big enough piece of wax paper. I'm going to grab my spoon and I'm going to grab a lever. Okay, so another thing I told you guys to always do, if it calls for measuring cups, take out both sets. If it calls for a leveler, take out both levelers so then you're not waiting for other students to um, finish with those items. So I've heaped it over and I'm now going to level it off. There's my one cup that I'm gonna take and lightly spoon and level off another. So basically what I did is I took two big cupfuls, okay, I sifted it and look how much flour. It incorporated air and it made it fluffier. So it is important, okay, that you do what the directions tell you to do. And then there's my second cup. So this extra flour now can ju just go right back into my container of flour. Okay, and there's my wax paper. And good, I'm gonna put this to the side, seeing if you can see everything. The next ingredient is one tablespoon of baking powder. And I told you that baking powder is a leavening agent. It's gonna make these biscuits rise. This uh, baking powder actually has a leveler on it. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it has a metal piece right there. Not all the baking powder containers have that, so you would then need the leveler. So one tablespoon, which is the big one here. So again, make sure you're using the right measurement. I'm going to take, I'm going to heap it over, and I'm going to basically take this and level it off. There's my leveler. Again, a big enough piece of wax paper. I'd rather you have a bigger piece of wax paper rather than not having enough wax paper too. Because that's what I'm also seeing, that your pieces of wax paper aren't big enough and then when you're trying to transfer them, you're losing your ingredients at the same time. Next ingredient is gonna be regular granulated sugar. So again, I know that I can level off above my container. This just calls for two teaspoons of sugar. You don't need a lot of sugar in this recipe because at the end, like I said, I like things sweet, so I add um, sugar and cinnamon at the end of this, on day two though. So two teaspoons, regular granulated sugar, and then a half teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna make sure I'm checking my measurements because I believe in one of the last videos, I measured the cinnamon wrong in the French toast and I said I needed salt. So a half teaspoon of salt. 
I'm going to check it again. So again, I have one piece here and I have another piece there. You're going to heap it over again. I'm going to level it off and I'm going to put it's measured for here. Again, this extra is going to go to the side. Next is a quarter cup of butter or shortening. I like to use butter in this recipe. So it's going to be a half stick of butter. If you didn't have butter, you could use shortening or Crisco at home. I just think it gives a, a flakier crust and better flavor using the butter. If you didn't have butter, you can also use margarine, okay? So I'm not gonna do anything with that yet. And then my last ingredient is going to be three quarters of a cup of milk. And of course, I made another mistake. I took out everything but my liquid measuring cup. So my liquid measuring cup, I'm going to make sure I have that actually on my equipment list. And I do, I just didn't read it properly. So what we're going to do is we're actually using reduced fat milk, which is 2%. Sometimes you want to use regular um, whoops, whole milk um, with baking recipes. But again, I try to uh, reduce the fat content in this because it is not the healthiest uh, biscuit. So we're going to try to reduce a little bit of the fat content. Uh, with uh, reduced fat milk. So three quarters of a cup, eye level, but this is not a flat surface, so we're gonna put it down on a flat surface. This is pretty heavy, so you're gonna make sure you can hold it. Eye level, flat surface, I'm just gonna go pinch more. Okay, I'm on the line at three quarters of a cup. So at this point, you would call me over, Mrs. Sauer, can you check our ingredients? Give me a moment to get there, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to check that you have everything, and then I'm going to tell you to move along with your um, directions. And another thing I don't have out again is a large bowl. Wow. Just don't do what your teacher's doing now. I thought I had everything set up and ready to go. Well, I guess I lose some points on this one. All right, so here we go. It says I'm going to go along with my directions now. Put measured and sifted flour into a large bowl. So I have my large bowl. This is my measured and sifted flour. And I'm just placing it into the bowl here. Again, do that carefully. I almost dropped it from the other side. It then says, sift baking powder, your two teaspoons of sugar, and your salt into your flour. So you're gonna, don't put your, your sifter away at this point because you're gonna need this again. So I'm just gonna place that there. I'm gonna take my baking powder my two teaspoons of sugar and my salt. And I'm just gonna do what the recipe says. A lot of that is just going right through it. And I'm just gonna sift that in and I'm good to go. All right next it says to cut in the shortening into the sifted ingredients. So I'm gonna take my shortening or my butter and it says to cut in. So to cut in, you would use something called a biscuit cutter, which is a handheld tool. This is sharp right here. If you didn't have a pastry blender at home, you would just use two knives. Basically what this is, is it's used in a rocking motion to cut the butter off into small pieces, the size of uh, coarse peas. Um, if, so again, like a, a small peas or coarse crumbs or anything like that. So you wanna be careful with that when it, and it should be, whoops, it should be chilled at this point, okay? It's gonna make it easier to uh, cut with it. So this will take a minute or two. Just using it in a rocking motion. Now it does get stuck in there because it is cold. So you could use whatever you have close by. If you have the two knives out, you can use the two knives to get it out. Many of you definitely will have a leveler, so you can use that. I also like to use the butter or the margarine because it's easier to see the pieces as you're cutting them up. If you were to use shortening or Crisco, it's white, just like the flour and other ingredients in here. So again, just go back and forth. And your dough is going to form better when your pieces are into in smaller pieces. So you see what I'm doing? I'm taking the bowl with my left hand and turning it. And with my right, I'm just using this in a rocking motion back and forth. And I'm going to go back, I'm going to go another about 30 seconds. Again, use my knife here, get any of the excess out. My next step 
it's going to be to make a well in the middle of the ingredients and to add my milk. So basically to make a well is just to make a little hole in the middle of my ingredients and I'm just going to use whatever I have close by. I see that I have a spoon over to my right. So at this point I don't see huge chunks of the butter. I'm getting all that extra out. I definitely, I don't think you're going to be able to see any of this right now. Okay, but I have very small pieces of the butter. So I'm going to make a well. I'm going to take my spoon that I have here, just making a hole in the middle. I'm going to pour my milk all at once. And then my next ingredient, my uh, next direction says to stir quickly with a fork until the dough follows, okay, the fork around the bowl. Okay, so watch, you're just using a fork, and it's going to do exactly what it says in the direction. Stir quickly with fork, only until the dough, the dough sorry, follows the fork around the bowl. So I'm kind of going back and forth. I keep, just keep stirring. I'm getting the side of the bowl, just lifting it up. It keeps coming together. I'm just stirring. You see how it's coming off the side of the bowl? That's exactly what you want. I just keep doing it. I have no crumbly mixture on the bottom. Basically almost lifted up here, see? It's a little sticky on the bottom. There's no dry ingredients there. So my next direction says to turn dough lightly on a floured surface. So I'm just gonna wipe this off a little. Now you can use the table like this or I'm going to have some cutting boards out because mine is a little wet right now. I'm gonna take a flimsy cutting board and I'm gonna take my flour because now what we have to do is we have to knead. I'm gonna take my cutting board, I'm gonna lightly flour my surface. I'm not gonna take this in my hands right now because it's gonna stick to me, right? Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it out onto my board now I'm going to take some flour again and lightly flour this because again if I was to take it all in my hands it's going to end up sticking. I want to get all of that dough. So kneading is a process of three words pushing, folding, and turning. So I'm going to make sure I get flour all over on this. Kind of moving it around and then what I'm going to do I'm going to push, fold, and turn. I'm just making sure all my dough is together right now. Okay, so I should probably have my sleeves up, but I have nobody here to help me. And black probably isn't the best color for this. So I'm going to push with the heels of your hand. You push, you fold, you turn. You push, you fold, you turn. I don't like the way that's working. My surface is dry here, so I'm going to go back onto the table because I'm dry. We definitely will be using that on day two. So push. Fold, turn. See how much easier our counter is going to work or our table? These tables are cleaned by you throughout the day as well as myself. So push, fold, turn. You don't want to over knead this. It says about 10 to 15 strokes. I'm going to say I have at least eight or nine. I haven't been counting. So I can kind of tell by the way it feels. And I'm going to say I'm done at this point. Okay? So that's basically it. That is it for day one. Then tells me to spray plastic bags. So you would have somebody to help you with this. My hands are a little sticky right now. You're gonna take a little bit of cooking spray. Make sure you get it in the bag. This is just to help prevent um, it from sticking. Just a little bit here and there. You don't want all yellow in the bag. You're gonna place the dough in here. You could either twist it, you can make a knot in it, or I will have some twisty ties available. And at this point, we will label it with your uh, period number and your lab number, okay? So that's um, bacon powder biscuits, a.k.a. cinnamon buns, um, day one, okay? So we're probably going to do the second video tomorrow, All right? Hope you enjoyed.